All right, so my name is Anna. I did write that down. My fiance laughed. He was like, just in case you forget, you should write down your name. I lead a group of 11th grade girls. I don't actually know where they are. There they are. I love you guys. Um, and I actually, I don't know if any of the leaders know this, but I was a student in Lifeline my senior year of high school. So in this building, although we met down the hall a little bit. So I've been part of Lifeline for a bit of my life. I was born and raised in Michigan, was homeschooled for high school, and then went to Western. I know. Yay, homeschooling. Woo! Um, and when Luke sent me an email um, asking me to talk tonight, it was really open-ended, which is kind of overwhelming for me. He's like, what does God want you to tell people? Um, so I started thinking about this kind of as a very long 15-second testimony. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, I'm actually getting married in a couple of months, and a lot of people have been asking, oh, what do you need? Let me know if there's anything you need. And so actually tonight, I'm going to talk about needs and God's provision, um, because as I was thinking about this, and I was talking to some people, it came up over and over and over again, which for me is a clear sign from God that it needs to be talked about. Um, so we all have needs, whether or not you want to admit it, there are things that you need. Um, some of them are physical, some of them are spiritual, some of them are relational, there are other kinds of needs. And I believe this side of heaven, you will always have needs. Um, but the cool part about your needs <laughs> is that whether or not there is a human that is able to meet them, God is able to meet them. And not only is God able to meet them, but God wants to meet them. Um, I think growing up, I heard a lot about God's ability to meet needs in abstract, and then I also experienced a lot of God's ability to meet needs in my life. Um, so tonight will be part teaching, part talking about God's word, and part me sharing some experiences that I had with seeing God's provision um, and God's loving care in my life. Um, I mentioned earlier that like this had come up, and I think this is really important. Um, as I was thinking through the different people I've talked about this with in the last little bit, um, I was talking with my small group here, um, so students your age, talking about things that they need and things that they, got, they need God to provide for them. Um, later that same week, I was talking to a friend of mine who is 34, so like a little bit older uh, adult than high schooler, and she was also talking about how she needs God to meet some needs in her life. Um, and then later that same week, which is why like God is just funny like that, it's like, okay, three times in a row, same week, um, I work in a uh, rehab facility slash old age home, and I was working with a patient of mine who is older than 100, and that patient was talking about how she needs God to meet needs in her life. Um, and so this isn't something that is something that is in your life right now. Like, you have needs, you're going to have needs all the way up until the time you leave this earth. Um, yeah. So tonight I want to look at three moments in the gospel where Jesus talks about God's provision or gives an example of God's provision and then share some testimonies of God's provision in my life. The first uh, passage I want to talk about today is found in Matthew 7, verse 7 through 11. And it says this, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven good, give good gifts to those who ask him? Um, so for a little bit of context, this verse is found in a section of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, so Jesus is on a mountain teaching a bunch of different segments of things that he finds important to his disciples and also a bunch of other people who are watching him. Um, and the, the people who are listening to his teaching are mostly Israelites. And 
from what I know, they have a rich history of seeing God provide. Um, if we think back to like Genesis, Exodus, we know like stories of God providing them escape from Egypt or giving them manna in the desert or um, giving them like a pillar of fire and a pillar of smoke for direction. Um, so they have a rich history of God's like provision. Um, but here Jesus is saying that he, like God the Father, wants to give gifts to his children now, right? He's not saying, oh, in the past God provided and that's awesome. He's telling them that God and he, through God, cares about them right now. Um, and that's what I want you guys to get from today. Like, God wants to provide for you today. Uh, it's not just something in the past. It's your present needs. Um, in my life, I have a lot of experience of God providing in my past. I was, when I was very little, my family had a period of financial hardship. And we would see God provide by having checks show up in our mailbox to pay for our groceries, or um, somebody gave us a vehicle, or um, somebody paid our mortgage one month. Um, and so I saw God's tangible provision for our physical needs when I was a child. As I was heading into college, I worked for a couple of years after high school and then really needed some direction. Um, and I was kind of agonizing over what God wanted me to do. And I, I felt God calling me to go to school for um, what I do right now. But I wasn't, like, sure, and I was scared, and I was trying to obey. Um, so I went, and I applied to the school, and I went in for an audition. Um, this is just kind of a crazy example of God providing what I needed there. I went in for an audition at a public school, super nervous. I'm singing because this is a music school. And we stop, and the person who was doing my audition, who I didn't know then was a believer, stopped and said, I don't know why, but God is asking me to tell you that this is where you need to be right now. Um, and then that day in my life, like, that's what I needed to hear. God cared about the state of my heart that day in knowing where did he want me to take my next step? Um, I also have a really kind of small, silly story from this week, um, but I'm talking about God meeting my needs today, and so this is how I saw God meet my needs this week. I, on Thursday, had to work really, really, really late, and on Thursday night, I have a small group, and I was driving from work to small group and did not have time to get dinner. We don't normally have food at our small group, but for some reason on Thursday night, all four of the other people in my small group brought snacks to eat. <laughs> it was like God knew that I needed some food on Thursday night, and he provided that. I didn't even ask him. Um, and the reason I talk about this and share some stories is because God's provision, from my experience, can look different. Like, sometimes it's a clear answer to a question. Sometimes it's like, I asked for this, and he gave it. Sometimes it's, I didn't even ask for it, and he gave it. Um, but what I want you to know is that he cares for you and your needs. Right? Those uh, examples of God providing in my life were not because I did anything or because I'm special, but because God's heart is so generous, and he loves me just like he loves all of you. And so... I just encourage you, like, trust that God knows your needs and wants to meet your needs today in your life currently. Whether that's rest, help with homework, direction for your life. If you're a senior or a junior, I know that's a big thing. Um, God really cares about you right now. Our next story that I want to share is also found in Matthew. It is Matthew 6. 25 through 30. So this is also in the Sermon on the Mount. It's just a little bit earlier. Okay. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. 
Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can eh, wait, we're still going. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendors was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So this is another passage found in the Sermon on the Mount. And I know we talk a lot about this um, in regards to anxiety and peace, but for me, those are tied really closely with God's provision. Um, when I see God's work in my life, I feel more peace. Um, and what I want to focus on from this verse is how God is caring for all of the tiny little creatures. It says, like, the flowers of the field, the birds in the air. Like, these are small things. things these are things that, like, I don't notice every day, and yet God notices and cares for them all, all the time. And then that last part of the verse where it says, like, are you not more valuable than this? Like, we know God cares for us. And yet sometimes we worry about big things, we worry about little things, and God cares for them all. And so what I want to take away from this one is, like, God wants to meet your big needs, and he also wants to meet your small needs. Um, I have some examples from my life that I want to share, and then I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, I always laugh a little bit about this when I was telling my, my dad about it when I was prepping. Um, this is an example of a small need, but God cares about parking spots. Have any of you been to Grand Haven? Like, have any of you tried to park in Grand Haven on a Saturday in the summer? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. So we were, I was in Grand Haven with some friends, and <laughs> we were trying to find a parking spot, and um, somebody in the car was like, you know what, we should just ask God for a parking spot. And I was like, well, okay. So we started praying for a parking spot, um, and as we were praying, there were two vehicles. We were like, oh, okay, God, can you please provide a parking spot? We need a parking spot. Um, and then I was like, oh, it would be super great, God, if you could provide two, because there were two cars. And as we pulled into the parking lot, two cars backed out, and there were two parking spots right next to each other. And that, I mean, it seems so insignificant, but, like, God heard us, and I believe he found joy in meeting that very, very small need of something that, I mean, that wasn't life-sustaining but God loves to give good gifts like that. Uh, an example of something that is a little bit uh, bigger was when I was in college. Um, and college is expensive. I don't know if you guys know that yet, but I was going into some summer school and I couldn't take any more loans and I didn't know how I was gonna pay for my summer classes. And I was really freaking out. And um, like I didn't, have any options. I was trying to figure it out on my own. And I got an email like the day before classes started, before I like knew I would have had to drop them if I couldn't pay. And it was an email saying that I had been awarded a scholarship that I did not apply for that covered my entire summer tuition. That has to have been God. Like that was not me. I was asking God for some way to like figure it out, because I was, felt like the world was ending at the time, but that has to have been God's provision. And so going, those are just two examples of like something that felt small and something that felt big at the time. And going back to the passage, if we think about how God is actively providing for all of creation right now, including us, and if he values us and loves us, Take a minute and think about, like, the big things we ask for God. Like, dreams, 
desires, college tuition. Um, I've seen God provide those, and those are so good. It's so good to see his provision in there. But how often do we miss the little things that God provides because they seem inconsequential? Or maybe we don't even ask for God to provide the little things because it seems inconsequential. Like, it's sound, I mean, even here, I'm like, it feels a little silly to tell you guys I was praying about a parking spot. But like, God cared enough to provide that. And if, if the beauty and the small gifts, the small provision that God gives us, parking spots, the sunrises, um, the other day we were out taking engagement photos and it was really snowy and gray. And lo and behold, as soon as we went outside to take pictures, God let the sun come out, which also was like, that wasn't something he had to do. But these are things that I believe show his goodness. And they're meant to be a reminder of his active work in our life. There's nothing too small. Like, God loves to give good gifts. There's nothing too small. There's nothing too big. He's God. And you don't need to wait until you have something that's, like, worthy enough of his attention. If grass is worthy of God's attention, you are worthy of God's attention. And so ask. Ask him. I have one more passage I want to talk about. Um, and this one has a little bit more to unpack. It's found in Matthew 16, verse 21 through 23. Um, so we've jumped ahead in time in the Bible, and Jesus is talking about his death. It says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely the concerns, merely human concerns. Now, I know this is like, uh, how does that talk about God's provision? <laughs> um, so let's look about, take a, take a step back and think about this. Uh, Peter is a Jew, an Israelite, and they have been hearing promises about the Messiah for hundreds of years. And they believed that those promises were saying that Jesus was going to somehow overthrow the oppressor. Right, And we know, like, that's true, that Jesus did do that. But they thought the oppressor was Rome. They thought Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman Empire and set Israel free. And so here Jesus is saying, I'm going to die. And Peter goes, but no, God, that's not what you're here for. That's not the provision you're here for. Um, but, but Jesus knew like, we know, looking back on the Bible, why, like, what Jesus was going to do. We have the benefit of seeing more of God's plan. Jesus knew that his death was the reason he came. That the restoration and reconciliation of creation was greater and bigger than the physical freeing of Israel from, Jerusalem, uh, from Rome. And that the hearts of his people, and that includes you and me, because we're his people, was more important and better. This is so, so hard. I think this is probably the most difficult one for me to take in, but like, God's provision is not always what we want. But God wants us to trust him. Right? Peter didn't want Jesus to say, I'm here to die. But God's view of what we need is so much bigger than what we see. It's so much bigger. And in my life, the challenges, the times that God says no to what I want, drive me to realize that God meets my ultimate need. Like that he is what I need. And he is the one that meets my need. So some, some personal experiences of where I have had to trust God in his provision that felt so confusing. Um, one would be when I was finishing college, 
I had to do some clinical training before I could get my degree. And I had sent some applications out and done some interviews and had two options before me. And one was my dream option. And one was like a good option, but I wasn't super thrilled about it. And as I was praying over and over and over again, I felt God say, no, we're going to do this one. We're going to do the one you don't want. <laughs> And I didn't understand it then, but I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. We're going to do it. And um, what I didn't know, what I know now, looking back on it, is that that was the training that would lead into a job, that would lead into a job that didn't go away during COVID, which leads to the job that I have now. Um, if I had taken the other one that I really wanted, the one that I thought was better, uh, I probably would not be living here in Michigan because there would be no jobs for me here in Michigan. Um, and so God knew like where he wanted me geographically. He knew what he wanted me to learn. And he, against what I thought was the best choice, told me to go with one that I thought was wrong. Um, another example is uh, my family has experienced some pretty heavy grief um, in the last year. And Grief has revealed a lot of brokenness, and that is not fun. Like family brokenness, relational brokenness, and I even now have to trust God and say, God's plan is better. The revealing of the brokenness, I believe, will lead to a better, healthier relationship, even if it's hard right now. Even if I don't like it, it I have to trust that God's plan, even though it's difficult is better. Um, there is a prayer that actually Luke shared with me. It's called the Prayer of the Unknown Soldier. It's from the Civil War, um, which kind of displays this uh, a concept of asking for God, God for something and him giving you something that he knows is better even if it doesn't feel like it. And it goes like this. I asked for strength that I might achieve, and I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. And I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of people. And I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. And I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything that I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered, and I am among all people richly blessed. Isn't it a beautiful thing that we serve a God that is bigger than what we think? Right? If I could understand God, if I could completely predict everywhere he would move in my life, then he wouldn't be God. He would be some sort of creation that my human mind has made up. God is bigger than what we can understand, and he asks us to trust him, to trust that he is God. Our takeaway for tonight, um, three things from those three passages, um, is ask, notice, and trust. Um, ask for what you need today. Notice God's provision in the big and the small things, and trust that he knows what you really need even if it's different than what you think. As we close off tonight, um, I'd like to do that first part together with you. Um, we're going to take a little bit of time to ask God for what we need. Uh, if you have, if you like writing notes on your phones, pull up your note app um, and answer the question that'll be on the screen next. If you are more of a physical writing person, we do have note cards and pens in the back. Um, we're going to take a couple of minutes to do that, and then we'll end with a song.
All right. Um, I do music all the time, and for me, the best thing for my soul after praying is to sing. Um, and this song, I think, is a really beautiful way to express to God that we trust him and acknowledge where he's been working in our lives. Um, it's the goodness of God. <sighs> if you would like to stand and sing that with me, please. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head down, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. So my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God so my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able i will sing of the goodness of god oh i will sing of the goodness of God. Let's pray. God, you are good. And we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, I, I pray for these students that they would see your goodness in their life, that they would have eyes to see your provision, that they would ask for what they need, 
Um, and God, that they would learn to trust that you are who you say you are and that your plans, your, your direction for their life is far better than anything we could hope or dream, far better than any disappointments we might face right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I have some small group questions I'm going to throw up on the screen real quick. I ran a little bit late, friends. Sorry about that. Um, so when is it difficult to believe in God's active provision in your life? Why do you think that is? And what gets in the way of asking for and trusting in his provision? And then which of the three examples from scripture do you want to remember and why? I hope you have some good discussions in your group. Thank you for listening.